Today I'm going to show you a dumbbell only leg beginner workout. You can do this at the comfort of your own home or you can do this at the gym. And I know how uncomfortable it is to be a beginner at the gym. So with your pair of dumbbells you can head into a quiet corner where nobody's watching you. I mean in general nobody's watching you but especially at the beginning you feel like everybody's watching you. So you just head into your quiet corner and do your workout. For the first exercise we are going to do a very staple one which is squats. Let's start with the basics. So for squats we want to stand a little bit further than shoulder width apart so shoulder width would be for me like here you can also do a sumo stance but i feel like especially in the beginning a sumo stance feels a bit weird have my core engaged and then we're going down into our squat and we don't want to lean like anywhere here because we're not doing rdls and we don't want to scrouge or anything all we want to do is what you would do if you would sit back on a chair don't go too low, you only have to be about a 90 degree angle. If it's not a 90 degree angle, you can be a little bit above it, which I did in the beginning all the time. And then you want to push up with your heels again. Let's try this with a dumbbell. Two variations. The first one, like I said, is more of a sumo stance, which I feel like as a beginner might feel a bit weird. But all I would do is I grab dumbbell. But you can also stand a little bit closer like this and see if you feel comfortable holding the dumbbell like this. You can do goblet squats where you just hold the dumbbell in front of your body. I feel like this is a little bit easier. Core engaged, going down and then pushing up with the heels again. You don't have to do anything up here. This is where the squat movement should be the hardest. This is where you can hold it for a second. This is the most important part of the squat, not this. We're doing 10 reps for three sets. As a beginner, you probably don't know how much weight you're going to need. I would start every exercise just with body weight or with very, very light dumbbells. See how it feels. You don't have to be embarrassed because number one, everyone started somewhere. Nobody cares about how much weight you're taking. I have never looked at anybody else and looked at how much weight they were taking, okay? Take the lightest weights where you feel comfortable and then you can work your way up. Don't injure yourself, especially in the beginning because your first workout sessions, they're gonna hurt so much. I remember the first time I went to the gym. I couldn't even move afterwards, okay? I was like, I, I cannot even go down the stairs anymore. <laughs> Next, we're doing an amazing exercise for your glutes, which is RDLs. All you want to do is push back your hips. You want your core engaged, you want your shoulder blades down, and then pushing back your hips as if someone was pulling you back. And then it depends on how far you can go down. I know some people like to go very far down. I don't like to do that because then I can feel my lower back taking over if I go too far down. So all I do is I feel where my stretch is gonna be, which is usually for me with my knees. You should be feeling your hamstrings, your glutes. And when I go up, I squeeze my glutes and push through my heels. Back up again. And you don't have to push here. All you want to do is you want to go back down just with the squats at the bottom of the movement. This is the important movement. Just like here, you want to feel the stretch. Going back up again and you don't want to lose the tension. So you don't have to go anywhere here. You can just feel the tension and then go back down again. You can also do this leaning against a wall. So you pretty much just push back with your hips until you touch the wall. This might also feel a little bit more comfortable in the beginning if you don't want your ass showing <laughs> in the gym. I would also highly recommend doing this without any weight, just warming up a little bit, getting used to the movement and then taking very light dumbbells and working your way up. I want to have my dumbbells very close to my legs and then I'm pushing back Here I can feel my stretch going back up again. Not like this, just where you can still feel the tension and then going back down again. Pushing up with your heels and your glutes. Really squeeze the glutes because you want to feel this in your glutes. It is a glute exercise. You don't want to be just going up and down. You want to take time with your movement and you want to focus on a muscle that you're working. In this case, glutes. Thank you. 
Next, we're going to do a single leg exercise. I like to have one single leg exercise in all of my leg workouts. We're going to do split squats. What I did in the beginning, I just always went back with my leg, just straight. And then I always felt like I couldn't keep balance. My knees were hurting. Biggest tip is step out, then go back. And then you wanna go down until you can feel the stretch. And we're pushing with the working leg. This is the working leg, up again. This leg is for balance. Don't be afraid of your knee coming over your toes. I know a lot of people say that, that you shouldn't do that. This movement is supposed to be like that. And we always wanna start off with the weaker leg. If you're a beginner, you might not know what your weaker leg is. This is usually the leg where you're struggling a lot. This is usually for me the leg where I'm not as flexible, where I cannot go as deep in the movement. Like when I'm doing Bulgarian split squats, one is super easy, one I can have amazing depth, and then the other one is like, no thank you. We are starting by taking a big step forward, and then we're going into the split squat. You also don't have to come anywhere here. You don't have to lock your knee out. We just want to go down, feel the stretch, go back up again, still feel the stretch and going back down again. So next we're going to do dumbbell hip thrust. I'm also going to show you an alternative if you don't want to use a bench or if you're at home and you don't have anything like a bench. You can take a chair, you can do this with your couch, maybe you have these little benches where you can sit on before putting on your shoes, something like that. I always used to do that when we were in lockdown. This bench obviously is way too high for me, so if you are short like me, you can just use a plate and put it under your bum which is gonna be a lot easier. You don't have to do this because you're not using a barbell or anything, but if you want to use a barbell, it's gonna be so much easier if you have that plate underneath. Because the goal is we want to have our shoulder blades. We wanna have the shoulder blades on the bench, being with your toes, outwards, a little bit more than shoulder width apart. When we're doing the hip thrust, what we want to do is we want to have the core engaged. So you can go all the way down if this is what feels more comfortable for you, or you just can do cast glute bridges, which is more like a shorter movement. And hip thrusts are more from the bottom. I personally do a mix of both, I feel like usually. A very important tip for hip thrust, because this is when I could always feel my lower back. You wanna be squeezing your glutes at the top of the movement, but you don't want to over arch, because this is when you will feel it in your lower back, especially if you have a lot of weight, especially if you do this on the dumbbell, uh, on the dumbbell, on the barbell. Squeezing your glutes, going back down again. Chin. It's not anywhere up here. I'm gonna be tucked in here. You can also move your entire upper body and do it like this. I personally like to scoop a little bit more. So I like to do this and then a little bit more stable. And we wanna do three sets, 10 reps. If you want to make this a little bit harder but not take too much weight, you can also use a resistance band. And you see now, I don't have to do any scooching. I am at the perfect height to go up and go straight into the movement. You can also push the dumbbell a little bit more here so that it's not on your hip bone the entire time. If you don't want to do this on a bench or if you don't have a bench, you can also do glute bridges on the floor. Go up here, squeeze your glutes, do not over arch, like you don't have to go anywhere up here because it's gonna hurt your lower back. You can do this with a resistance band, especially in the beginning, getting used to the movement or take a dumbbell. I like to hold it here so it doesn't hurt my hip bone. Squeezing the glutes. And for the last exercise, we're gonna do a little bit of a glute burn. I'm going to use a resistance band, but you can also leave this out. This is going to make it a little bit harder, but we're not gonna do any weights. We just wanna do something that really burns the glutes for the last movement. And what I wanna do is crab walks. We're going down into a squat position, and then we're just going like a crab side to side. 
You can have your hands here, put them on your hips, wherever you feel the most comfortable. I like to do a little bit more reps with this because we don't have any weight, so I usually like to do 20 reps, two to three sets with this until I feel pretty much like my glutes are falling off. That was the beginner dumbbell only leg workout. Let me know if your glutes are burning. Let me know if you enjoyed the workout. Subscribe if you want to see more workout videos and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!